how do I, as a professional photographer, see the future of photography as a business? Let me give you my thoughts from the viewpoint of somebody who just wants to get into professional photography. Why? Because in Facebook groups I moderate, I see more and more people trying to become professional photographers. Is that a clever decision? My name is Wolf Amri and in this video I will tell you how I see things. First of all, I'm a professional photographer for around 15 years now. I have always been interested in photography and together with my wife, I did some slideshows in big auditoriums even before we made the jump to being full-time professionals. Back when we did, we had to pass a state exam, which took two years of preparation. That has changed big time, so let's get right into it. Nowadays, photography is usually an open business. Please note that that does not mean you can just go and start charging other people. You need a business for that in almost any country. But I'm not getting into details on this. The nature of this open business is that many people can offer their services as photographers. You don't need to qualify. In the past, there were some obstacles to get into business. The biggest one probably being expenses for cameras and other equipment that cost it an arm and a leg. That also has changed big time. Even entry-level cameras, by the way, we have an entry-level camera test on this channel, which I will link at the end of the video, perform better in many ways than pro-level cameras 10 to 12 years ago. Speed lights and flash have become much cheaper, even resulting in big flash companies getting out of business because of too much competition. And many of these flashes and cameras are much easier to use than ever before. More about that later. So with the financial hurdle being dramatically reduced, more and more people can afford decent performing cameras. Beside that, gaining knowledge is also cheaper than ever before. Spend a few hours on YouTube and you get so many tips and complete courses. If you did that a decade or so ago, it would have involved reading and buying many, many books of different photographers. Nowadays, you get all that for free in the most easy to understand way, which is video. In fact, you're just watching a video of our photography course, so make sure to subscribe. How does that influence the business side of things? Twofold. First of all, more people have decent cameras and like to photograph their nephews' weddings, their bosses' portraits, their family pics, product shots for their websites, and so on. So the demand for professional photography is decreasing because people either take the pictures themselves or have someone to take them for free for them. On a side note, with the advance of smartphones and Instagram, image language and the appreciation of quality images has changed too. People nowadays much rather accept less image quality than 10 years ago. Real is a pretty common term in marketing agencies these days. And the second thing is more people try to become professional photographers. So more photographers will share less jobs. But not only that, new photographers try to build a portfolio and work for less or even for free. So some of the jobs that are still there will be taken by people who often charge close to nothing. And the more start their business, the more will be willing to charge less and less and less. So that is a downward spiral. Talking about smartphones again, with the invention of smartphones, many, many more people, particularly young people, grow up with photography that would never even have found interest in it before. But it's not only young people. With the advance of technology in general, digitization will continue, meaning that machines will do what people did in the past. That might not be a bad thing, giving us more spare time if, if politicians react, but otherwise it will just create unemployment. Do you see the pattern again? More spare time will lead to more people enjoying photography as a hobby, getting better and not needing professional photographers for their images. And on the other hand, people being unemployed, looking for new jobs and think, why not become a photographer when they like photography? 
So again, more photographers for less jobs. Please don't make the mistake to think that is far away in the distant future. That will soon affect us all. So unless you're close to retirement, this is something you have to keep in mind. Beside that, a new thing is companies gathering requests from clients and forwarding these to their base of photographers. The photographers shoot the demanded images and the client can then choose from a big pool of images, only buying the ones they like. Nobody cares about the work or expenses of the other photographers. They get zero. So let me recommend not taking part in this game of roulette. I have been talking about digitalization. That doesn't only take regular jobs away, it will again have an effect on cameras. Artificial intelligence, AI, has already started conquering camera technology. Face detection and eye detection in not even very expensive cameras have become pretty common. Gone are the days when you had to struggle setting your focus point within your frame to get the desired subject in focus rather than the background. And I bet the next thing will be cameras that make exposing an image a breeze by metering every single pixel and adjusting ISO and very likely even an electronic shutter to expose every single pixel individually, making manual exposure a thing of the past. I hear you say, wait, photography is art. No machine can replace the eye of a good photographer. But I need to tell you, that is pretty short-sighted. Machine learning is a big thing. And big data is doing its job in this regard too. Analyzing millions of images of known artists will make it easy for camera manufacturers to find out what is most pleasing to the human eye. The camera will then probably show you some errors in the viewfinder to help you with the composition as a first step. But it doesn't stop there. Have a look at this little toy. It's the Osmo Pocket from drone manufacturer DJI. Which, by the way, acquired Hasselblad, the company that builds the probably highest priced cameras in the world. This little thing has a gimbal head that can follow a subject wherever it goes. With big data and machine learning, it will soon be able to frame the shot according to its database of what people find most pleasing and rotate the head in whichever direction to take the perfect shot. Is it a toy? Maybe it is. For now. But imagine a Hasselblad camera on a bigger gimbal. Still a toy? So instead of needing a photographer with a great eye, all you may need in the future is somebody who carries a gimbal around. And the camera will then take the shots automatically. What is my recommendation for people who want to become professional photographers? If you're willing to change, go for it. But if you want a job that you can do until you retire, I'd strongly recommend having a plan B.